The Postgres 18 official release is just around the corner and we really need to talk about it. Granted, database updates might feel niche or boring, but this time around, the changes are too big to ignore. After all, Postgres is one of the few pieces of software that quietly powers almost everything, from your side project running on a $5 VPS to massive systems handling billions of records in production. Probably the most important addition of this release is the new support for asynchronous input and output, which fundamentally changes how Postgres deals with disk operations. For years, Postgres handled I.O. the old-fashioned way, blocking on every read and write, and waiting patiently for the disk to respond before moving on. Granted, this is reliable, but it is also painfully slow under load in read-heavy applications. Version 18 changes this architecture. The database can now queue up multiple operations at once and process them as the results come in. That means faster queries, lower latency and performance improvements up to two or three times better in real-world tests. But the performance improvements don't stop here. Postgres 18 brings a bunch of smart, under-the-hood optimizations that make your queries run faster without having to rewrite anything. First, we get smarter handling of OR and IN clauses, with Postgres now automatically rewriting them into any expressions which the planner can optimize more efficiently. Second, hash joins got a serious upgrade. In previous versions, they were already useful for large datasets, but now they're faster and more memory efficient, especially when joining large tables. On the developer experience front, Postgres actually delivers features that make schema design and application development less painful. One of the most noticeable changes is that virtual generated columns are now the default. Instead of storing computed values in the table, Postgres calculates them on the fly when you read the data. That means less storage, faster insert and update operations, and fewer headaches when dealing with derived values. Another interesting addition is the built-in support for UUID version 7. Unlike the randomness of UUID version 4, UUID v7 includes a timestamp component, which makes them naturally ordered and much friendlier to B3 indexes. And, of course, you can extract the timestamp directly from the UUID itself, which is a nice bonus for debugging or sorting records. The returning clause got smarter as well. You can now access both the old and new values of a row in a single statement. This makes things like auditing, logging, or even undo operations far simpler. However, one of Postgres's many strengths is its reliability and support for enforcing validations at the database level, and version 18 continues to push that forward. One particularly useful new feature is the support for temporal constraints using the without overlaps clause. This lets you define time ranges in your schema and ensure they don't overlap. So if you're building something like room bookings, scheduling systems, or rental platforms, you no longer need to rely on complex app logic or awkward triggers to prevent double bookings. The database will enforce it for you, and it will do it efficiently. Finally, another underrated but very impactful change is how Postgres 18 handles upgrades. Historically, after a major version upgrade, you'd have to rerun Analyze across your entire database to rebuild planner statistics. That step could take hours on large datasets and would leave performance unpredictable until it finished. Now, statistics are preserved during upgrades, so version upgrades are much smoother and less risky, especially in production environments. Let me know in the comments if you are interested in a deep dive into Postgres. Please don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and until next time, thank you for watching.